for this period. Can you tell us more about the work of your organization? Uh, okay, so Act for the Disappearance was created to support the family demand uh, to know the fate of their loved one uh, in Lebanon. So in Lebanon we have 5,000 to 8,000 missing and so Act um, uh, aims to uh, bring reparation to the families of the missing to accompany them in their search to know the fate of their loved one. And it's also, our main objective is also to contribute to clarify the fate of the missing. Um, so we have several activities. Uh, you want me to talk about the activities now? Okay, so we uh, created one year ago a digital memorial for the missing in Lebanon, because in Lebanon we still don't have a list of the missing, 30 years after the end of the war. Uh, so the objective of the memorial is to uh, create like a kind of a profile page for each missing person and to uh, collect the stories of the missing from their family members. So we, um, we recruit volunteers to meet with the families and to, uh, to have an interview with these families and with the information we collect we create this profile page online. So for now we have more than 200 uh, profile pages uh, and we already trained more than 80 uh, students to conduct these interviews. Uh, one of the other objectives we have um, is, as I said, to contribute to the clarification of the missing. So we started one year ago an investigative project uh, to gather information on uh, the disappearance of the missing on places of disappearance and on uh, the location of the mass graves. Okay, so we know that, and you also mentioned this in your presentation, that, the, that most of the disappearances in Lebanon happened during the civil war. So I want to ask you about like, what, how this fact transforms your work, like how, uh, how are, what are the like, specific difficulties to conduct work on disappearances occurred during a civil war? Uh, it's difficult because first of all in Lebanon we are uh, we don't have a transition, uh, a political transition. So the people who were the leaders of the war, uh, the majority are still in power today. Uh, so of course they don't want to uh, address the issue of the missing. Um, they don't have any political interest in addressing the issue. So it's difficult because we are working uh, against the will of the of the authorities. The other uh, major challenge is the fact that um, uh, the, in, in all communities in Lebanon we have uh, victims, so we have missing people, but we also have the perpetrators. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's difficult because if, if I'm a family member and I have a, m a missing loved one, uh, I, in my communities are also uh, people who kidnapped uh, individuals from other communities. So uh, first of all, it's difficult to bridge uh, between family members from all communities and it's difficult also to, to convince the society that addressing the past is important uh, because they uh, don't want to reopen uh, the file of uh, the civil war for many reasons, but one of them is that they fear that it's going to revive the tension between communities also because they don't want to, 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 to address their own responsibility in the war. Um, so what is very difficult is, as I said, there is no political will and we have to face this political will, but we also have to face the unwillingness of the society to address the issue. Uh, so the families of the missing are very isolated in the society and they really feel uh, abandoned. So it's uh, like a taboo subject, can we say that it's uh, like a taboo subject in Lebanese society? Or? It's kind of a taboo, I would say. I mean, for example, as society organization, we are not threatened by the authorities. I mean, I would say that I mean, in all activity, we have we we, are, we don't have any uh, problem uh, with the authorities, but it's kind of a taboo because I would say that the the the, the policy of uh, of amnesia uh, worked pretty well. Uh, I mean, most of the Lebanese don't want to reopen this file, uh, so it's it's a taboo in the sense that. Yes, I mean, people don't want to talk anymore about that because they just think that it's just going to uh, reopen the wounds. Uh, 
uh, without bringing any solution. So why we would open, reopen the wound if we are not able to find closure? Uh, and they feel that we cannot find closure because of this political class who uh, don't have any interest in addressing the issue. Uh, and like when a family decides to decides to learn more about the fate of their beloved ones, if they have somebody who has disappeared in their family, like in that process of finding out what has happened to him or her, what kind of the concrete, concrete obstacles that they need to face? Uh, I mean, most of families, right after the disappearance of their loved one, try to investigate the fate of their loved one. So they met with a lot of political leaders trying to get information or trying to get contacts with family who might, with um, fighters who might have information. Uh, they also um, tried political, um, sorry, religious leaders. Um, but after 30 years, very few families are still trying to investigate because, I mean, it's becoming much more complicated to get any information. Um, some of the families also went to Syria because I said we have 100 cases of people who have been transferred to Syria. Uh, but today, I mean, the f I mean, I would say that the options of the families to know what happened are mainly uh, uh, focused on uh, lobbying for a draft law for the creation of a national uh, commission to investigate the fate of the missing. Uh, it's a draft law that was created by civil society organization and that is uh, pending in parliament since 2012. There have been three commissions, okay. but none of them uh, managed to get answer on the fate of the missing. They were designed to fail. Mm -hmm. uh, they were designed by the authorities to fail. But this one is designed by the Swiss society? This one is a, it's a draft law uh, that uh, about the creation of a national commission that would be uh, where representative of civil society organization and family members will be represented. Uh, and there is a, a lot of, um, a lot of, um, I forgot the, the word for that. I mean, a, a lot of precaution uh, to make the work of the commission independent from the authorities, and independent from the army and from the internal uh, security forces, uh, and also uh, to, to give resources to this commission uh, to undertake uh, its work. So it's one of the main uh, demand of the families today in Lebanon is the adoption of this draft law. In parallel, there is the International Committee of the Red Cross who started in 2012 to collect the anti-disappearance uh, data mm -hmm. from families of the missing. So it's all information about the missing that will uh, allow us to identify the human remains once the mass grave is going to be exhumed. Yeah, the, the, like my last question is about the mass graves. You, uh, in your presentation, you mentioned that there was like only one mass grave where Lebanese soldiers who were kidnapped and killed by the Syrian army was buried. It, it was like open and there was a like process about that mass grave. But can you explain us, can you tell us more about the mass graves in Lebanon and like what kind of initiatives are uh, like yeah. The yeah. So the, there are hundreds of mass graves all over the Lebanese territory. Um, so as you said, there is uh, only one grave that was uh, exhumed according uh, international standards or best practices. And where we managed to identify the remains, it's the grave that was based at the Ministry of uh, of defense uh, and it's because there was a political will to exhume the grave so the army decided to exhume the grave because the people buried were Lebanese soldiers so because of this political will uh, it was possible uh, but for the rest of the mass graves there is no political will to exhume the grave so the priority today for us is to protect these graves because they are at uh, high risk to be destroyed uh, because of construction um, and it's mainly, um, uh, I mean, it's really an issue in Beirut, for example, where there is a lot of constru construction since years. So there is an urgent need to locate the graves in order to protect them. Uh, there is also a uh, an urgent need to collect the information from the perpetrators be before they pass away, because 
and we're going to lose the chance, the opportunity to give answers to the families. Uh, regarding the graves also, um, there is the RCRC who started one year ago to collect the DNA sample from the families in order to be able to identify the human remains once the, the graves will be uh, exhumed. But for now, uh, there is no exhumation of the graves. What is happening is that uh, so from time to time human remains are found on construction. Most of the time the police is not uh, informed about this discovery, accidental discovery, and it's a big issue because most of the the time the, the remains are reburied or they are destroyed, they are burnt. Um, and when the police is informed, we documented 32 cases where the police have been informed about the discovery of human remains. But because there is no capacity in Lebanon for now and no awareness uh, from the police, from uh, the forensic and from the judiciary, uh, the, the the exhumation and the identification process is not done uh, is not done properly. So the the remains are not uh, exhumed properly, and there is no investigation about the identity of the of the of these human remains. And most of the time, uh, the authorities are not able to identify the remains and render the bodies to their families. So a lot of these remains have been kept in morgues and when the morgues are full they are just removed and buried and there is no track of, uh, of them. Uh, and we also heard that some of them are kept in, in box in some uh, judiciary palace in, in several regions. And again, I mean, there's no track of that. So we will never be able to identify these human remains. and never able to give answers to the families. So it's really, there is really an urgent need to locate the graves and protect them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.